I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost 300 games. 26 times I was asked to take the winning shots and I have failed. I have failed over and over again and that is why I succeed, said Michael Jordan. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to U Talks. You are watching the episode number 2, Decide Speed Over Precision of the series we are doing, The CEO Next Door, a research work based on Elena Bothello and Kim Powell's work. Those of you who are new to the episode can watch my first episode, but today we are going to talk about uh, the decide speed over precision. But this would be the flow of all of our episodes, which will be completed in next few weeks. So let's talk about the successful CEOs always stand out because of their decisiveness. They are always driven by this unique sense of responsibility that the buck stops at my table. They're always there. They always feel that it is their responsibility to drive the things, whatever they are. But how do they succeed? How do they do that? They always feel that potentially a bad decision is better than a lack of direction because they keep on moving. Therefore, they have this unique sense of responsibility to take the organization ahead, even if, even if they have to make some bad decisions. But they always keep on exploring and keep on moving in certain directions. Now, the most important thing which comes is that they always try to make the complex very simple so that uh, the decision they are making is not based on 100% information, but probably on 80% to 70% of information. And the idea, the idea they have is that how do you communicate your vision? How do you communicate your mission, your goals, your challenges, what you're competing in the market to all the starters of your uh, employees you have, the partners, the ecosystem you have. So you define the complex things into simple things by saying, we want to be number one or number two or number or we want to be number top five in this segment or probably we should be the most recognized brand or most recalled brand in this segment. So they make the complex things quite simple to understand and that's how they integrate and make their communications and viewpoints very, very clear. So that's why just summarizing decisiveness, moving ahead, making complex as simple is the key task which they do. The other most important thing is that whenever they are discussing, when they are building the inputs, they're building the execution platform, they give people voice. They give their executives, their leadership, all the voice they have. However, they don't give a vote. For example, they have, if there's a deadlock, they will assess, they will take all the information, but the final decision will be made by them. So they always give a voice, but they don't, they don't rely to give a vote of any, uh, of such nature. However, also most important thing is that they make fewer decisions. Now that is a very, very important point, which I was very amazed to see uh, in the research work that they make fewer decisions, which means that they are not deciding about each and everything. However, they're always quite watchful that if some decisions which have to be taken by other departments or divisions or leadership should not be harming the company anyway, they keep that eagle eye on on what is happening however they will not go and make decisions for others and that's how they build the delegation decision power system the next point is that they keep at looking how do you get better every time they look back they make mistakes as their laboratory and the art of apology i'll come to that uh, in the next slide very specifically they have a great art of apology and communication they always look inward they always condition their own mind for the decisiveness muscle to be developed. See, if you want to be decisive in whatever you are doing, it doesn't come very abruptly. You have to practice it, practice it on a daily basis. So, and also it also depends upon what is your physical fitness? What is your mental state of mind? Are you exhausted? Are you tired? How you're making those decisions? So a CEO has to be probably one of the fittest person so that he can integrate and go ahead in making right decisions always as well most of the times so that's why uh, looking inward and uh, there are different different techniques to do that they keep conditioning their own mind so that their decisiveness muscle is developed and they look to the future this 10 10 10 principle is quite amazing which i know uh, 10 10 10 means that how your decision is going to make a difference in the next 10 minutes in 10 months and probably in 10 years that's how they evaluate some of their key decisions. It could be some impulsive ones. It could be some strategic ones. It could be some tactical ones. So it's a good technique they, they develop. Then they look around. It is not about only me or my own thought process because 
Please remember when CEOs are uh, functioning, they are quite accomplished for their job. They have a lot of information coming to them from outside in and from also inside out they are exchanging. However, they keep on seeking contrarian perspectives so that their mind remains fresh. I remember someone told me somewhere that I keep my mind in the refrigerator so that it remains fresh. So they keep, they keep in a pursuit of keeping their mind fresh so that they develop the contrarian perspectives. So now coming to uh, most important thing is that they might not be responsible for the fault, but, but they take individual or personal responsibility. They feel that it is my responsibility even if the fault belongs to anyone else. That's a very, very important skill which most of us uh, sometimes struggle to develop. Now what comes is that when you develop that kind of a skill to own responsibility for even others fault, you have to have an art of apology. There are fantastic points mentioned here are based on the uh, research work or discussions which happened between the authors and the Metronic CEO uh, at that time probably around 10 15 years ago. So he mentioned a few points. One is be personal. Assume personal responsibility of a mistake. Be focused. Address the facts, the mistakes you did and bring it to all the parties who are impacted. Be genuine. Your voice and your tone uh, or your words should be matching. It should not be a, a you know, fake apology. So it should look very genuine. The other important point is that you have to act swiftly. Sooner the better. You cannot delay an apology if something has gone wrong. Be comprehensive. Get all the facts and admit that it has gone wrong. And then also put up a plan that there will be no reoccurrences. So these are all best practices how a person executes his functions as a CEO or even those who are aspiring to be or are in the process and some of the things we today talked about does not only just apply to CEOs even it can apply to senior leaders into your own work scope on a daily basis. So I hope you enjoyed this special episode on decide speed over precision. Thank you very much. We'll see you again in episode number three next week. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye.